Okay guys, so I'm going to try to not get eaten by mosquitoes while bringing you this video. But today we're going to be talking about the surprising and the mysterious, the Tom Brown Tracker. Now the reason why I say it's surprising and mysterious is a lot of people look at this knife, maybe in a knife store, maybe on Blade HQ, and you know they kind of think what the heck is that thing, would it even be that good? And that's kind of where the surprising effect comes in. And it's really surprising because the Tom Brown Tracker is actually a pretty well thought out and designed knife. Now of course when we look at a tracker it has to be looked at in effectiveness in a very similar way to the how I did my K-Bar review and that is that we have to go into this review knowing that this isn't going to be or that we can't push this into the same exact role as something like a wood lore or a battle lore from Battle Force Knives and we also can't make it perform like a Bark River Knives Bushcrafter because this simply is not that kind of knife, it's not that blade shape, thickness, any of that. So we have to take it in more how it performs accomplishing tasks, not how we can make it conform to a bushcrafting or survival knife in particular. It is really its own beast. And that's where the surprisingness comes into it because when we take this thing from an objective standpoint and just look, you know, how well can it feather sticks? You know, choked back right around here, you, know, you can actually see that the performance is pretty darn good. You know, I tried to uh, roll in some of that footage for you guys of the feather sticking. You know, obviously this thing does an amazing job at uh, batoning. It also does a really good job, though, at chopping. And that's something that I found a lot of knives, especially for this blade length and thickness, do not do a very good job at. So the fact that this knife has a superior blade shape and handle shape, as you guys can see, has a very distinctive handle shape as well, that allows you to choke back on it and get really hard, good swings, makes it a pretty impressive one-tool option. Now, granted, this one-tool option is going for more of a high-tech route of, you know, using advanced blade shapes, using advanced handle shapes to accomplish you know, a one tool option, but I think this does a very good job. And once again, when you look at it just across the knife counter or at Blade HQ or another online vendor, you look at it and just be like, wow, that blade shape's really funky. It's probably not going to do that good, but you actually bring it out here in its environment and, you know, start using it to chop wood, to process, to build shelters, as I've shown in the past, you'll actually be pretty impressed with the performance levels of this uh, knife. Now, what are the biggest pros to this knife for me? For me, the biggest pros are its chopping abilities. It's very good. Uh, so its chopping abilities and how those relate to shelter craft. Many knives that I bring out here are good solid knives to use, but I wouldn't feel very confident solely relying on them to build even very basic or very primitive shelters just because they don't have the ability to effectively chop through structural pieces of wood that you can use to fortify or fortify a shelter such as a lean-to or wickya. This knife, on the other hand, it does have those abilities, and not only does it have them, it has a great ease of going through larger structural pieces of wood, and so that is the largest pro for me. The second largest pro for me is the fact that it's a very robust knife. You don't have to worry about this thing breaking, and you don't have to worry about um, anything like snapping off or really any of those types of concerns, aside from the edge rolling, which we'll get into in a little bit. The third thing for me that I really like about this is it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife jammed into one knife without the multi-tool kind of thing. You know, there's a bunch of tools within this blade, and what I, what I really love about this knife is if you're creative and you can kind of visualize how you can apply the blade shape in different situations, you'd be amazed at how many different circumstances and scenarios this knife will actually do a pretty good job at. So that is my top three reasons why I really like this knife. Top four is durability. It's been excellent, no issues. In fact, there really hasn't even been much rust on this thing. And, you know, I've been using the hell out of it and seeing, you know, what exactly this knife has in it. And I think that's been a really fun journey for me is just to take this knife and just throw it into conditions with myself, with my friend. You know, we've just taken it out, used it, saw how it performed, and we're pretty well impressed with it. 
I, what I find really impressive is actually the fine skills, how fine you can actually make this knife perform by choking up. And I was a little bit concerned about this because most of my larger knives, such as the Pacific, the Thug, uh, they all have choils that you can choke up onto the blade and be right up on the blade. This knife does not have that. The closest you can get is this grip or this uh, central cut right here. So this is about as close as you can get to the edge. However, it still does a really good job at doing finer tasked skills. Now granted, the largest hindrance as I've talked about before with this knife and it doing those really fine tasked skills or really fine skills for bushcrafting, such as notching, you're going to run into issues with how much beef is behind the blade. This is a quarter inch slab of 1095, and when you put a bevel on it and you're grinding it down, you can only grind so much steel behind that edge. So this thing is still pretty beefy behind the edge, and that does result in it not doing as well. You know, when it comes to doing things like notches, you know, it doesn't really like to do them, especially smaller notches. Whereas something like my Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore would effortlessly craft notches all day. So what are the biggest downsides to this knife in my time of having it? Well, the first one that is luckily correctable is the inability to strike a ferro rod. And that is because in true tops fashion, they coat the entire blade in their black traction coating. And that kind of sucks for me. So I just pulled off, as you guys can see, a little bit of the coating back here in this kind of, uh, in this kind of humped back region. And because of the way the blade is treated, your outer edges are still pretty hardened. So it throws pretty good sparks. So I kind of removed that negative, but it was a big negative for me because my idea with this knife is if it's a one tool option, then that means it's just the only tool I'm taking out with me. You know, I don't have some striker for a ferro rod, you know, or something like that. You know, I don't have another blade that can strike this ferro rod or strike a ferro rod, sorry. And so I need this knife to actually be able to do that. So luckily it was correctable. I have a whole lot that I really dislike about this knife in regards to this knife itself. You know, um, it is an interesting design. But the only thing I really found fault with the blade in performance was I do wish the edge was a little bit harder. I feel like it's a little bit too soft because there was a time when my friend and I, we went uh, out into a recently freshly burned area, freshly like forest fire burnt area, and we were chopping down some trees that had been essentially fire hardened because of how they got burnt in the fire. And uh, this knife, the edge right around here, the primary contact and use area where we were really thrashing it, uh, kind of rolled to one side. So I did have to take this to my sharpener and actually straighten and correct the edge and knock off the burr. It didn't take a whole lot of work to do that, but the fact was we really weren't using this knife super hard. And I mean, we were chopping, of course, and the wood was pretty uh, fire hardened, but I was a little bit disappointed with the performance of the edge. I wish it wouldn't have rolled so easily. And so that's the only real concern or issue that I had with the performance of it. And or those were really the only two cons to the performance of this blade that I have had with it. And once again, I did correct the edge. And it hasn't had any issues since then. So maybe it was just a fluke, but at the same time, was a little bit disappointed at first when that happened. So those were the biggest things for me. Granted, there are other cons to this thing, but they're also pros in a similar way. Like some may argue that this knife is very heavy. And I would agree with them. This is a rather hefty knife to carry. And you know, that is a disadvantage, but at the same time, it is an advantage when you know you're chopping and you want that heft behind your blade because the more weight you have when you're swinging something, you know, the more impact it's going to carry and the easier it's going to accomplish its job when it comes to chopping. The other thing, you know, once again, we talk about the uh, fine skills of this knife due to the heft and the beef behind the blade. And one modification I did was to the sheath, I added the ability to carry a smaller companion knife. So this here is a TRC Mini, and I'm not gonna to talk too much about this blade, but essentially it's a very easy, very small knife to carry. And once again, it just clips right onto the sheath and it has its own sheath that just bolts right onto the primary sheath for the tracker. So if I am out alone and I just have this knife set up, you know, this knife combo, I do have a knife for finer tasks. So if say I need to dress a small game animal or if I need to uh, 
I do some finer tasks that the bigger blade just can't handle. You know, I do have a smaller companion knife that will get those jobs done. So anyways, guys, that is what I think of the mysterious and surprising Tom Brown Tracker. As always, God bless and I'm out.